Hi, my name is Jessica Culture Queen Hebron, and I am the Chief Creative Officer and Master Teaching Artist at Culture Kingdom Kids LLC, where we create empowering entertainment for your royal children. What inspired you to become the Culture Queen? Well, um, a couple of years ago, um, I started off as a children's event planner, and I specialized in Black history-themed children's events. And I started hiring um, performers to perform, but because the name of the company is Culture Kingdom, I noticed that there needed to be um, more than just Miss Jessica performing. Um, I actually feel like I um, turn into my best self when I am working with the children and really walking into my passion. I love learning about my history and culture and celebrating it and helping others to feel inspired to do the same. It makes me feel royal. And that's how I want people to feel um, having uh, an experience in my programs. And so um, Culture Queen was befitting. Um, actually, the first program that I started with uh, was a Black history superhero party before super he black superheroes were very mainstream and popular. So she was my superhero name. And uh, we went through many costume changes with that before we came to what you, you see now. Uh, so Culture Queen is... It's who I am. And um, I always like to tell the kids, it doesn't mean that um, that culture queen or the word queen doesn't mean that you know everything. It just means that you feel royal learning about and celebrating yourself and that you get excited about continuing to learn about your history and culture. Yeah, how important is it to, you know, have that positive image for kids? Well, it's important to me because I grew up seeing those images. A lot of times people, when they talk about, um, especially in children's entertainment, sometimes people say they didn't get an opportunity to see a lot of people who look like them. And I could say that in some ways that's true, but my parents made sure uh, who you met. <laughs> my, yes. my parents made sure that they surrounded me with culture kings and queens. Uh, from the people in my family to their friends, to the people who they introduced me to, even making sure that after shows and children's shows or even any type of performance or event that I was going to, whether it be a political event or even just a church event, they made sure that I made personal contact with the people that were entertaining me, teaching me, and that I had a personal relationship with them. They made sure that I had personal relationships with my teacher and that they did so as well. And that enhanced the quality of the experiences that I had as a child in summer camp and in performing arts camps and activities. Um, I would say that I'm still in contact with many of the teachers and leaders that inspired me. And it's important for other parents to do the same. Uh, to make sure that children have entertainers and educators that look like them. But most importantly, even if they don't look like them, uh, people that will pour into them, believe in their children and treat them as their own. What does it feel when you uh, see your parents out there uh, when you perform? Well, I feel very privileged um, and blessed because I am 38 years old and I can tell you, I probably can count on my hand the amount of performances my parents have missed. They've only missed a performance if, you know, I was out of town and they couldn't get to it. But for the most part, I am used to having my parents be the first person in the audience and the first person there, the last one to leave. And um, sometimes I think about the fact that, you know, uh, my dad is turning um 75 this year. My mom just turned 69 yesterday. So, you know, black don't crack. So they let's pray they'll be here for a long period of time. But I understand that, you know, not everybody's privileged enough to have their parents to even be interested in what they do. And my parents don't care that it's a children's show and that it's really geared for kids. Um, they've come to see just about every performance. And I, I don't take that lightly. My husband reminded me just today when we were in the car that I shouldn't take that lightly. And, you know, I'm so thankful because when they're not there, it's not fun. And I also, they they also give me real-time feedback. Um, they're honest with me about if I need to improve something or if I did something really great. And um, it's, it's a blessing to have them there. What is your creative process? 
you know, I'm so glad you brought this up. So I have enhanced my creative process and my show at the Wolf at Wolf Trap actually forced me to step up my game a bit. Um, so I'll say this is a part of my creative process. Number one, um, I try to, I would say that what I wear on the outside is a part of the creative process. So anytime I'm doing a new show or getting ready for a show, I really, it starts with, you know, the music I'm listening to when I get ready. It starts with the perfume that I put on. Like every every outfit, every experience has a different set. Like it has a, um, I can even tell you just like, even for my wedding, I had a certain kind of perfume that I wore for that wedding that went with the specific dress. So so like for the culture queen outfits, and I've had many over the years, they they take on a life of its own. What I have on right now is it's totally the vibe that I'm feeling. And it was custom designed for this year's experience and who I am as culture queen, 13 years in the business and at 38 years old, 20 years from now, I might have a whole different vibe that really tells you a lot about who I am, even like the crown. The crown that I wear this year is different from the crowns that I wear, you know, years from now. So part of the outfit, it's not just like fashion. It it really is about even like the earrings that I wear. I had these custom design. These ones mean friendship and camaraderie. And that's one of the themes this year for me. So everything has symbolism. So that's the outside, right? The outside is also trying to figure out what's comfortable. My outfits are things that can go into the washing machine <laughs> and things that are comfortable because I'm sweating. I'm definitely sweating. And you saw a very high energy engaging with the kids. Okay. So that's on the outside. Let's talk about the inside. Um, working on confidence. So I tell the kids that they are towers of royal power. Um, even though I say that to the kids, I have to admit that I'm still working on the confidence um, to sing. That's always been something that's made me a little bit uh, nervous. Um, and so this year, one of the things I was working on with my vocal coach, who was actually in the show, was uh, loving my voice. Um, a lot of times in children's performance, the songs and the singers are sopranos, and I am a total alto. And so I worked this year on not only loving my voice, but actually creating it, singing in my actual voice, not in falsetto, not just working on breathing exercises. I learned that I needed to work on proper breathing when singing, especially for outdoor shows or summer shows, or just in, in general, when I get nervous, um, I forget to breathe. I'm going to do it right now. So breathing is a part of the creative process. Um, another thing is I like to uh, I've had, I'm starting to have a lot of fun rehearsing with my band. If there's a show that I'm doing with the band, if I'm not, then I'd like to listen to my songs and imagine myself. Um, another part of my creative process is drawing out things. So I like to kind of draw out what I think I want the scene to look like or um, talking to people who inspire me and kind of talking out those ideas. The last thing I would say is, um, okay, I can't, I can't have a show without having some type of smoothie or some type of uh, either a cold smoothie, fruit smoothie specifically, or like some hot herbal tea. Um, I can't live without a uh, uh, 24 hour lipstick because it stays on for the show. Mm -hmm. And I told you scent is very important to me. So um, every show has a scent that goes with whatever it is I'm trying to convey. Um, I think at that show, I, I just like to, I like to wear things that make me feel royal, but also things that I feel like not only will, uh, when the kids, when I walk by them, they have a, they will have a sense memory of where they are. So that's, I know that that's like more about fashion, but fashion is so much a part of, um, right of what I do now, the song process, the songwriting process, some of these songs are like 15 years old. I get inspired writing songs um, based off of like things I wish I would have heard, things that have a catchy beat. Um, I like everything to rhyme. So if it were up to me, everything would rhyme. Um, and I do find a creative process where I, I may try to think, can I dance to it? And I usually take it to my producer or my music director and say, hey, you know, this is what I'm thinking. Here's some music references. This is what I'm trying to do with this song. This is how I want kids to feel with this song. And we build 
we build from there. But usually there's lots of dancing and um, lots of I'm always thinking about what I, I know this sounds like so backwards, but I'm always thinking about the scenery and what I want it to look like and feel like. And then we work our way backwards from there. Yeah. And the reason why, you know, I asked to do an interview is I saw your performance with my wife and kids at uh, Wolf Trap and uh, it had such positive energy and a safe place for all kids. And it was a packed house. And then I talked to you uh, last week and you talked about it being a, a full circle moment. Could you yes. say a little bit about that? Yes. Well, and and I have to thank you also just for coming with your family. Um, I don't know what made you come, but I'm happy that, you know, we got to meet. And that's kind of how it happens in Culture Kingdom. We meet people, they something about the show. And that's what I'm saying. The magic yeah. that, that comes to the show is something that I feel like I was brought here to do. Um, it's been confirmed for me time and time again that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And it does bring, even though, like I said, it's so interesting. I started this program, uh, Culture Kingdom Kids, uh, 13 years ago, but I used to go to Wolf Trap as a kid. I used to go just about every summer. Uh, my aunts and uncles go all the time because they live very close to Wolf Trap and they go to see all the shows. But I specifically went to children's theater in the woods every summer, seeing children's performers like me. Oftentimes, I never saw one that was my skin color, but that didn't really matter at that time. I was just happy to be at the show because I knew that I wanted to be a children's performer and I took an interesting path to it, but I always knew that's what I wanted to do. And um, then when I became a camp counselor and director of a performing arts camp in Virginia, I actually, we took our kids every summer. And so what was very special about uh, this month's program was that um, the children from the camp, I haven't seen them since the pandemic, uh, they actually came to the show and they came deep. Like they bought like hundreds of tickets. Was, they were packed. Yes. I have to give a shout out to the Kapanga Center, Kapanga Kids Program. They, that, I secretly was wishing they would come. I didn't, I didn't invite them per se because I understood that like that was, I thought that it was a big ass, but I just kind of promoted it widely to my networks. And I was just praying that, you know, people would fill the room because it was my, or fill the outside because it was my first time at Wolf Trap and a lot of my other children's music, musician, musician friends have performed there. So I was like, I'm a hometown person. So I hope that people will come and they did. And, um, I, I will never, I've had many big shows. I've had well-attended shows, but I will tell you, this show goes into the Culture Kingdom history book and my life story as one of my favorite shows and most memorable. And here's why. Number one, the amount of children, they had to hold the show because so many buses of children were just coming in and they didn't want the kids to miss it. So I said, I can wait, you know, that touched my heart. Um, not from an ego standpoint, but from a, wow, these, these parents and adults thought this was important for their children to come see. And they invested in that. And I need to keep doing whatever I'm doing and do more of it because the magic that I felt on the stage when we were rehearsing, when we were performing and connecting with the audience is something that I feel like I need to have in my life all the time. And seeing those children, I am Still high on the energy that they gave me. I mean, you saw it. They were coming in droves on the stage. And usually, you know, they don't want, you know, they, you want to kind of have maybe five or six kids on the stage, or usually you call one or two. But my thing was they wanted to come and I wanted them to be there. And the other thing I'll say about this is we spent so much, you know, I told you I'm always thinking about like the decorations and stuff. Right. This year I said, yeah, I said, you know, I'm an event planner. So, you know, and my sister's an interior designer. So decor is like really important to me. But this year I said, I need to time wise, expense wise. And then just also, I was like, I, I need to focus on making sure the show is good. I've done the show a hundred times before, but this time I want to focus on making sure that my performance is as quality as it can be. And what I meant by that is it's going to be outside. So I need to make sure I don't pass out, you know, with yes. reading exercises. 
do I need to do? I trained with my yoga teacher, Michelle Blue Yoga. Uh, we do a comedic form of yoga that comes from Egypt. Um, we trained outside so that I could get used to breathing outside. Um, secondly, uh, we I had my 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 um, voice coach, Cindy Brown. Uh, we worked very a lot on um, breathing exercises and accepting my voice. Then um, the dancing comes natural, but the um, the band, when we finally assemb assembled the band, we really worked on making sure that the show was funky and that it would make, you know, all children and adults want to dance. And so we brought that synergy. So what I'll say is the decoration was not anything that I could have put on. The decoration was the fun. The decoration was the joy. The decoration was the energy of the children and that was the party. And that's more than any, you know, we were considering, oh, Culture Queen's dance party. Maybe I'll get a balloon arch. Maybe I even considered having confetti pop up at the end of the show. I considered all kinds of stuff. And Wolf Child was like, just, okay, whatever you want to do. But none of that was needed. And none of what we had at that show, what the children bring, what the families bring, what I brought, it didn't cost anything because joy is free. And happiness is free and dancing is free. I mean, the ticket costs, but what we both got, everybody from the show, um, I'm I'm still high off of it, you know? And I just don't ever want it to end. I know it has to, but I don't want it to. When you, you know, talk to kids after, uh, how does it feel that you're making an impact in their lives? I think just the fact that they're happy to see me especially the ones who haven't seen me in a long time because of the pandemic or they've grown up. And so you might think, eh, kiddies, they may think this is baby stuff, kitty stuff. They may be, you know, kids go through that phase where they're too cool for everything, but that that's not happening. Um, they're growing up and I'm part of their childhood. And I know that people, you know, it's really interesting. After the show, we went out to eat at a black owned restaurant in Alexandria and my after school instructor from kindergarten to sixth grade is a manager at that restaurant now. And so if you think about it, we ran into her and her children were at the restaurant and she was a big part of my creative journey because she was there at the beginning when I was in Girl Scouts, when I was, you know, in um, after school, uh, we did all kinds of performances and she directed all the shows. So just imagine how that must feel for her to see me and I still remember her and she still remembers me. So I think what I feel or um, I know I feel very honored to be part of someone's, a positive part of someone's childhood. And um, I think it's the most special and unique job you can have. I'm pretty sure that teachers and doctors and other people who work with children, dance teachers, you know, anybody, karate teachers, whatever, piano lessons, they they may feel the same. Um it's just, I, I don't know. I'm kind of emotional today because something in me happened at that show where it helped me to realize that I need to be doing this more yeah. um, and I need to do whatever it takes uh, to make sure that that's happening because it's, it's good for my spirit, but I also see that it's great for the children too. It's great for the children because they were dancing under the sun. Children who I know are shy, children who are antisocial, children who even don't get along with each other. I saw them dancing with each other. I saw children of different races, different religions. I saw different age groups, grandparents dancing with their grandchildren. And they were doing dances that are very wholesome. And we didn't need a whole bunch of technology to make that happen. That's the dream that I have for the show and what I want to continue. So I, I know that we're on to something here and it yeah. just took 13 years to get there. So I would just say to anybody who is um, considering any dream that you have, it doesn't have to be like what I do, but like the, the part of the creative process is revision and revision doesn't have to mean perfection because what's perfect or what's right for the different times. You know, like I said, I keep saying this, I've been doing this 13 years, but really I've been doing this since I was a kid performing in my living room. Yeah. 
what's what's right for 20 for this year and what was right before was right at that moment you have to keep revising and getting better and better perfection doesn't have to be the goal but you have to keep figuring out how can i get better at my weaknesses how can i strengthen the things that i'm naturally good at and what is something that i can try different each time to make it um different not in a competitive way but just more so in a like growing kind of way and this year i can say that i i i, I felt really I was proud of the show that we did because I know I had worked and prepared on it. I didn't just roll out of bed and just do whatever. <laughs> you know, I really worked on it and prepared for it. But most importantly, I told the band, I said, listen, we came to play today. I don't care if you make a mistake. Just let's have some fun. We came to play and you have to play to win the game. And we were winning because we were playing. And if it's fun, you're always winning. And that's what's more important to me. Not was every tone, note on tune or on key or did every dance step get right? Or even if we didn't have the whole place sold out, that's not what winning was to me. Winning was to, was how much fun we were having, all of us. So where do you want to see your mission in the next, say, three to five years? God has told me, what I'm supposed to do next. I'm going to tell you, when I was dancing on that stage, I told you that show was life-changing. I've done many shows, and there's always been something life-changing about something, but it was something about that one. I don't know. Maybe it was the heat. <laughs> <laughs> it was hot there. <laughs> it was hot. I was sweating. Like, the sweat was, like, in my eyes, and I was so thankful that I didn't wear too much makeup that day because it would have been in my contacts. Um, okay, I'll tell you what my vision is. Um. And I, and I say God has been speaking to me because I, I am a Christian and I got baptized this year and I realized that I have to keep God in my business plan if it's going to be successful. So this is what's been on my heart. Number one, Culture Kingdom, I keep telling you, is 13 years old. And I think that's really important because if I had a child, that child would be 13 going to middle school or going to high school, you know. Um, and over the years, the children have grown up and I have so many royal families just like yours because you're now part of the culture king. You came to the show, you in. <laughs> um, but I want to create a um, family network of all the families that are across the nation and internationally. I have culture kingdom kids all over the world and all over the country. And I want to create a family network so that you guys can stay connected with each other as you continue to grow. Um, I grew up in a network like that uh, growing up, and it was really important to my family growth. And I think it'll be important to have that since we already have it established. So I want to move from just being the performer, per se, to also um, creating community around culture. I mean, it makes sense based off the title. The second thing I'd like to do is... Um, I'd actually like to have Culture Kingdom as a physical place. Um, I don't want to alienate anybody from being able to come by having it in a physical place, but I actually live in um, Baltimore, Maryland, and Baltimore, Maryland has a lot of amazing opportunities for Black women-owned businesses. And um, I'm thinking that I would love to see it as a physical space where we can have children's events um, and exhibits and things for kids to do. There are plenty of things to do in Baltimore and all around the DMV. But uh, some of the things that I'd like to do, I think we might need a physical space so that we can actually do it. So I don't have to keep setting up, up in my car. <laughs> and it's not a physical place. I'd like a place that travels from country, uh, country to country, state to state, something maybe franchise perhaps. Um, those are some of the things I'd like to do. I'd like to travel city to city with Culture Queens Dance Party and continuing to build community with all the culture kingdoms all, all over the world. That would be ideal. And then on a personal note, I think it's time for me to have my own Culture Kingdom kids. So I'm working on that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of things that I'd love to do. And if I could make those dreams happen um, within the next one or two years, I would be so immensely happy. So how can people uh, reach out to you and learn more? Well, you can visit culturekingdomkids.com where you can find um, all of my latest music videos, including this one. 
Uh, it'll be on YouTube, but you know, I'll definitely upload it up here. Um, actually, I have a recap of uh, the show that is coming and I have new music videos that are coming. Um, it's been a while since I've released the album, but I'm releasing a new one, which we call Culture Queens Dance Party. Uh, but you can find my uh, album, I Like the Me I See, and a couple of the singles of songs that I'm either featured on or did collaborations with on CultureKingdomKids.com or on iTunes or Google Play, wherever you can find music. Um, download, stream, Spotify, all those places. You can visit me online at um, uh, Instagram, Facebook at Culture Queen underscore official. I'm the only one. So Culture <laughs> Queen underscore official. And um, I also have a pen pal club and you can go on my website. And if you look at the pen pal club tab, you can write to me, uh, sign up and I will write to you. It may take a couple of months, but I'm working on the culture kingdom letters now. So uh, your royal children can always stay in contact with me um, that way. Uh, I have a pen pal club with over a hundred pen pals and I do write to them from time to time. Um, and I like to hear and see what they're doing. That's how I keep a personal connection. And so um yeah, those are the ways. And then, of course, I always have shows happening all the time. Right now, I'm in residence at the Smithsonian Anacostia Community Museum for the rest of the year. And I'm there the first Saturday of every month. Um, so you can go online to my website and see all of the shows that I have. And also, if there's a place that you'd like to see me and I'm not there, then you can go on my website and I have a electronic press kit um, that you can download and uh you can also inquire about how to bring me to where you want me to be. And oftentimes I'm going to work, most likely I'm going to work with you to make that happen. So those are the ways, Culture Queen underscore at Culture Queen underscore official on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, um, culturekingdomkids.com for events, for music videos, for more information about programs all of your streaming platforms for the music. And if you want to see me in person, you can check out the events. And if you'd like to bring me somewhere, come on. I, re I can't wait to hop on a plane and north, south, east, and west. I'm coming where you will have me rest. <laughs> <laughs>